Alright, hello world. So, uh, Hades Omega here. So, today I'm shooting a video on uh, how to properly lower the rear of your DR650. So, uh, I mean, I've, this is my uh, 97 DR650, the cactus puncher here. And uh, I don't know, if you kind of follow my, my vlogs and stuff, uh, you'll know that uh, the rear suspension on this bike has been giving me grief for a long time. I finally got the front sorted out, I think, you know, I, I'm pretty happy with it. But the rear, I've, I've never been happy, happy with. You know? It's always been bouncy, you know, but... Um, but anyway, yeah. So I elected to uh, to lower the um, the bike when I first got it, um, just so I could get my feet on the ground better. And, uh, um, and yeah, I mean, I guess those of you that with like shorter legs, you don't really have a choice. Like, hopefully you don't weigh a lot, and you, if you're riding off road, you don't weigh a lot, and if you're short, you know, because because uh, that's a, like a bad combination. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so. So, um, I was just going through one of my videos, and I just finished L.A. the Barstow to Vegas, um, like a month ago, and, uh, or almost two months ago, and, um, yeah, the rear, the rear suspension has been, like, not kind to me on this bike, um, and, uh, and I was watching my Baja videos, and I was watching the worst crash I had in Baja, and that was because the, the wheel, the rear wheel here, contacted the the fender up there hard enough to like just throw me off the bike so I'll have a clip of that and um, and yeah so I found out recently that I I, I didn't lower the bike bike properly um, it's it's no excuse for uh, like the shitty Suzuki DR650 suspension the the shock um, the shock is absolutely horrible on this bike I hate it um, I am I think I'm planning to get a aftermarket one, but I have this Cogent rebuilt one. I'm gonna give it another shot for now, but I I, I still think I'm gonna get an aftermarket. Um, I just don't like the way it, it you know it dampens, and um, if I need to get a bigger spring, uh, I, if I have to get a stiffer spring, then I I think I'd rather just get an aftermarket one because it already comes with it. So anyway. That's that's besides the point. Um, so I'm going to show you today how to properly uh, lower the DR650 and and like um, and the reason um, the reason this needs to be done. Um, well, the, the, that's I already kind of did show you why. But uh, so there's a, this is a cogent rebuilt shock. It's a it's a cogent rebuilt stock shock. So it's just basically been revalved. Um, but it, this is the one installed on the bike. Um, and this has a 7.5 millimeter uh, KGMM uh, spring on it, and it's set to the standard position. So, if uh, if you look at your DR650 shock, it's got two holes in it. See, see there. There's a top hole and a bottom hole. The the bolt is actually connected to the bottom hole. So, uh, to lower it, you need to uh, to move that bolt to the upper position. So right now it's on the lower position. So it's set to like a standard height, um, and then you need to set your preload, and your your sag, and all that. Um, so the problem I had is the collar. You have to actually disassemble the shock, um, at least the part where you can get the spring out, and then you need to you need to flip the collar around. And I. I've done some research on the internet, and I hear people talk about this all the time, but no one has made a video or illustrated this, so so that's why I went ahead and gonna go make a video about this. I know there might be one out there, but I haven't found it yet. So here I have on top of this washing machine uh, a uh, stock uh, DR650 shock. Um, this is this is actually a uh, shock I I bought to replace the. The shock that came with this bike. Um, the shock that came on this bike was completely blown, and it had no oil in it when I bought the bike. So it was it was totally dangerous to ride. Like the the wheels would just not stay on the ground. So and like and so when you ride the bike very hard, that that's that's the kind of like situation you're in. Unless you get like a better shock, or you revalve the shock, or you know you work with it. But anyway, um, so this is a, this is what a, a, your typical stock DR650 shock looks like. So, 
So I'll kind of go over the anatomy. I've already taken it apart. Um, the reason being uh, this one isn't on the bike anymore is because I, I tried to rebuild this one and I fucked it up. I dented the shaft here, so it's no good anymore. I, I ruined it. So, but lo and behold, I was able to rebuild rebuild the one that was on the bike before, and uh, it didn't have any problems. And then and then that shock I re, I replaced with the with the stock one uh, with that cogent one. Anyway, so here's the so this is the shock body. This is where all the oil and all the guts of everything is in there. And these are the collars. Oh, I have two sets of collars. That's weird. Um, these are the collars. Uh, these are the upper collars. The upper perches. These are the ones you use to adjust um, the height of the spring. This is your spring right here. These are the collars. These ones are already on here. I don't know, I don't know why these ones are. I don't know where these came from. This is your bladder. Boop. This is the thing that you fill up with nitrogen. And um, this is the um, this is the cover for your shaft right here. And this is the pin. I think it's a the clevis pin or something I think it's what they call it and um, and then these are your collar, kind of collar s s assemblies so what what's very important here to understand is if you're lowering the um, the shock you need to flip this collar around or else what happened to me may happen to you if you bottom out the bike bad enough so basically what this does is it's it basically it adjusts your travel is what it does so Go ahead and look at this. Um, I made this printout of the stock DR650 shock from the service manual. So it shows you all the parts here. Um, there's actually a cover for the holes. I, I don't remember where I put that, but you don't need it. Um, just to keep dirt out. Um, so it's so in the manual, it actually shows you how to uh, lower it. I think in the owner's manual, it tells you how to do it too. I'm not sure. But. Um, so this is an example of what a stock uh, shock, a uh, stock uh, standard spring spring seat is what it says. So this is a standard height shock, and this is the lower position shock. So uh, so basically, um, basically the way you're lowering it, the way you can lower it is through these collars, which you're not you're not supposed to lower it with these, but. It, that's that's the effect that it has when you adjust this. It raises or lowers the spring, and um, but you use this to set your sag. Um, the what the way you're, the appropriate way to lower it is to uh, to move the bolt holes. Um, to move the bolt from the from the lower from the lower hole to the upper hole, it, it gives you like an inch. It lowers it like an inch or something. Um, so, with that being said, um, with that being said, since your uh, since your your rear your swing arm is higher now, um, you risk the chance that your wheel will hit the fender like I did, like that. So to prevent that from happening, you you reduce your the travel the shock travel, and to do that, you need to flip this bad boy. Now. So if you look very carefully here. Um, and I will go assemble this, and I'll I'll give I'll show you what's going on here. Um, but anyway, this is the standard, and this is the, the lowered position. So in the lowered position, you see here the um, the collar here, the part that holds out the bottom of the spring, is uh, is this way. So you see this. So when you have it like this, see how the, there's a, like a little lip here. Um, when you have it like this on the bottom of the shock, it pushes the spring up higher, thereby um, reducing your travel. It, I think it, it, it reduces it from like 10 to 9 inches or something. And by doing that, by doing that, it, it, it allows your shock to bottom out using the bump stock. Actually, this is a stock bump stock right here. This is the reason I replaced that one. So this one is in really bad shape. But uh, yeah, it uh, allows you to um, to use this to uh, to stop the shock rather than the wheel hitting the fender. So to go ahead and do that, you flip it around basically. So so you can see in this picture, the collar is like this. So the little this uh, this kind of lip, the inner lip, is facing downward. So basically, and then and it, so that what it does is that lowers the um, 
the, sh the spring. And if if you you know if you had to tell, he told me um, that's pretty ingenious. I've never seen any other uh, other bike that has this kind of lowering system on it. So it's I think it's great that Suzuki had made something like this. I don't know why all bikes don't have this, but uh, it's uh, you gotta you gotta pay attention to the directions. And, and so yeah, so I mean everyone. Everywhere I read on the internet says like, yeah, you gotta flip the collar, you gotta flip the collar, or else, or else that would happen. But, you know, I never fully understood it, you know, because nobody, no one explained it clearly to me, and so that's why, that's why I'm making this video. So, um, so let me go put this together, and I'll show you what's going on. Okay, so I've kind of, I hurriedly uh, um, uh, assembled the shock. So, uh, oh, the bump stops not in there, but. Um, so this is a uh, so this is what the the shock looks like with uh, with it. Um, this is the normal setting. This is the way I have it right now. So you can see here if I spin this around, it's um, the collar here is um, is resting here in the middle. So you see you see here it's in the middle. It's sitting on top. Um, this is a this isn't the way it's supposed to be. This is supposed to be in there, and uh, the bump stop's supposed to be in there. This washer, it doesn't even have the cover for the, <laughs> for the shaft. But uh, but anyway, so so actually, let's go okay, ahead and so measure that. So we're gonna do a little experiment here. Um, so what we're gonna do is uh, I've I've reassembled the shock the way um, most of the way. Some of the stuff is still missing. Like this is supposed to be in there, but it it should be. We should be able to do this experiment without uh, without installing everything. So, so basically, according to this picture, you're li you're limiting the travel. You're reducing the travel of the shock, as you can see here in the picture. See, so you got less travel here than here. So we're gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go demonstrate that for you right now. So right now, I have the shock. Go rotate the collar here. So right now, I've got the shock. Um, I pushed it up as far as it'll go, and um, and then we're gonna go measure the distance from, uh, let's say the. The seat here, the little, the the bottom of the spring, to uh, to the to where the um, the bottom of the shock body is. And that'll be our reference point because according to that, our our travel, the stroke should be less. Okay, so it looks like I got about from like say like right here. I measure. It's like about four and a half inches alright so four and a half inches of uh... there's still uh, four and a half inches of of travel left at least without the bump stop so i'm gonna go ahead and uh... flip the collar around uh, alright so i'm gonna go and flip the shock collar around to the lowered setting so you can see it's it rests on the bottom of the collar now instead of in the middle and I'm gonna push the shaft up. I can't really do that with one hand. Okay, so I pushed it up all the way. So now, now, let's go measure it. So from, the, from here to here. So yeah, you can see that our travel has changed. Ugh. So I guess it was the bottom of the perch, right? It's now it is like four, four and a quarter almost. So we lost more than an inch. Because remember, it was five and a half before. Um, yeah, so four and a quarter. So that's about. We've lost about. I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. So you, so you just lost like one and a quarter inches of travel by doing that. Um, so there you go. So, so that's how they. Um, that's how they keep the bike from bottoming out. Um, and like, of course, this bump stop is supposed to be here, and then, and then this bump stop is supposed to limit um, your uh, your. Um, it's supposed to bottom out. That's what you're supposed to do. It's supposed to bottom out before the wheel hits the fender. So that's what this is for. So uh, you want that to happen. You don't want to, what happened to me to happen to you. <laughs> so, so if you do lower your bike, don't just don't just drop it a bolt. Um, you gotta flip this collar around. So it can bottom out properly. Um, it's still a shitty shock, but um, yeah. But, but like normally, you would adjust the sag and everything. There would there would be more than four inches of travel. Trust me. Um, you would probably have to adjust this the collar like all the way down. Then you will get more travel. But 
Um, yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's just a game of kind of playing with a... I mean, it's nice that they give you this adjustability, because there's more ways to lower the bike. You can use the, the preload collars to adjust the height. Now, you're not supposed to, but you can. And, uh, and you use this method to... Uh, this bolt and collar method to, uh, to lower the bike. So, so that's how... Um, that's how it works. Um, I hope you guys have learned something. Uh, I hope you guys have learned something. Um, don't let what happened to me happen to you uh, by properly lowering your bike. And uh, yeah, so uh, I had to find out. Uh, I had to find out the hard way. <laughs> but well, yeah. The like I said, the reason I made this video is because no one had properly illustrated. Like, hey, you got to flip this around. I don't know. Well, well this is the collar too, you know. So. Um, so yeah, you're, um, you're supposed to flip this around, and like I never saw, I never saw how that 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 worked. You know, it it looks like it seems like it's supposed to be the other way. You know, but um, but in the manual, that's the way they tell you to do it. So that's the way they engineered it. So uh, I think it's uh pretty cool. You know, but um, but yeah, I no one ever never never showed me that um, that no one's ever uh, illustrated it on the internet. And, uh, so until I, I just found it out recently, <laughs> I've been writing it like the wrong way the whole, for a long, long time. Uh, until uh, until yeah, until I got in a real bad crash because of it. Um, it's not yeah. I mean, if you ride the bike, if you don't ride the bike super aggressive, you, you should be okay, I guess, um, with it without flipping the collar. But you know, just for insurance, I would flip that collar around um, and let the let it do its job. Um, you probably might not want to, I don't know, hmm. it's interesting about cutting the bump stop too. Yeah, you would really have to measure like how, how much, uh, how much your wheel is traveling and stuff. Um, it's, it's a real, it's a real game of, uh, you want to, you want to make sure you use the bump stop, but like you, you can also cut the bump stop so you get more travel, but, um, you want it to bottom out too. Um, that, that's, uh, the, um, the bump stop and bottoming out is like it's a safety measure. It's a safety measure to keep your your bike from destroying itself. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I hope you learned something. Hey, this is my out.